Well, hello, 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 and welcome to my channel. Today, we are going to be checking out the battery. You know, I'm gonna be showing you how to check your battery to see if it needs to be replaced. And possibly also, we're gonna go over how to check the alternator to see if the alternator is working properly. So that's what my video will be about today. Stay tuned. Right now, I'm having a couple of issues that have come up uh, with, the, with the vehicle, and uh, part of it is uh, one of the first things that popped up, I noticed that the window, when I would get in and out of the car, sometimes, you know, in this car, when you open the door, the window will come down a little bit. Uh, let's see if I can see that window creaks down a little bit. And then usually when you close the door, it goes back up. So the issue that I was having was that the, um, the window would come down, but it wouldn't go back up. Uh, so I just, at first I thought maybe there was something going on with one of the, uh, the, um, the switches in the, in the door lock, uh, which I've actually replaced on this vehicle before. And then um, I had another issue where I filled the tank with gas and the, the gauge just didn't move. So that kind of threw me, you know, and I was like, okay, there's something going on with this, with this gauge. But eventually, uh, another thing that occurred is the radio would kind of glitch, where it would kind of turn itself off and on. So obviously I was having electrical issues and that drew me to, to check the battery out. Because the car, it runs fine. Um, there's no issues with it, but I know, you know, it's getting colder now, you know, right now it's October. So when I crank it, it takes a little longer than normal. So I went and um, I did a check on the battery and that's what I'm gonna go over today. I'm gonna check the battery out and show you how to check the battery. And also I'm going to, uh, well, I'm gonna replace the battery on the car because I already know, I've already checked it, but I'm just gonna go through with it to show you guys how you can do that on your, your car. And this is pretty much for any, any vehicle, uh, 12 volt you know, battery system. So you know, all you need uh, for this is a multimeter. Um, you need well to remove it. You need some, you know, a socket set to get rid of the, uh, the to loosen the nut uh, to get the uh, the terminals off, and um, and obviously you're going to need a battery. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that, uh, and that um, I'm going to go up to uh, to this one of the local stores and uh, pick up one of those batteries because you can't. Most people don't ship them uh, online, and um, the Porsche battery, the original OEM battery. Is about three hundred dollars. I already called the uh, the local Porsche dealership, and uh, but a lot of people use the Audi uh, Audi battery, which is about two hundred dollars. It's the same battery, just doesn't say Porsche on it, um, or doesn't say um, Audi. I think I'm personally going to go with the uh, Bosch battery, or Bosch, um, and um, I'm going to um, one of the other batteries that I looked at was the Interstate battery, but nobody really stocks it around here and I need to get the battery changed uh, soon. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna be doing that uh, today. So we're gonna start off by uh, just going and grabbing uh, a multimeter. And uh, with the multimeter, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna check the voltage on a vehicle. And I'm gonna also show you how to check for the alternator. Uh, so that's another thing that we're gonna go through. As long as I'm already using the voltmeter, um, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and show you how to use that uh, to, change, to check the alternator. And I am going to also show you what a uh, working battery should look like uh, using the Escalade, because the battery should be okay on this vehicle. Uh, so I'm gonna be going over that. So that's what I'm gonna be going over with today. And I uh, hope you enjoy the video and hopefully, hopefully it helps you out. Okay, so today, uh, so now we're gonna be checking out this battery. You know, this is the Porsche 911 997, but everybody's battery is different. You know, usually it's in the engine compartment, and um, on the 911s, obviously it's in the front, which is the trunk, you know, the front trunk. So here's your battery. This is a Porsche OEM battery, and, you know, the part number for this one is 999.611.080.21. But for your vehicle, um, it'll vary. Uh, so right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna check the voltage on uh, this battery. And what I'm using right now, there's 
This is what I'm using, it's a voltmeter. There's different ones, some of them will say DC and you wanna choose something where, this is a 12 volt battery, so you're gonna to wanna to choose something that is gonna be um, around like, I guess, from 12 to 20 DC. On my, my particular uh, voltmeter, I am using um, this function here, which, which will check voltage. Um, so just make sure there's one with dashed lines and there's one with um, without. Um, so the one that I use for this will be the ones with the dashed lines. So, and obviously if you know how to use your own voltmeter, you can always follow your own instructions. But from there, all we do is we're gonna have these two, there's different ones, you know, these have these terminals. Um, some of them have clamps, which are the better ones, because this one I actually have to hold, um, which makes it a little tricky because I'm trying to do this with, with, uh, with while holding my phone. But um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna check the voltage. And actually that's the positive. So you wanna get, the, the red is a positive. So that will go there. All right, so right now we're gonna to be touching these two terminals. Um, this is the negative. Um, you're gonna to have to find it on your battery. Negative sign here, positive sign there. So black is gonna go here. And then the red is gonna go there. And if you're looking at my voltmeter, it's reading 11.5. So, Let's see if I can turn that up towards the camera. So it's 11.55, that's way too low. Um, this is a 12 volt uh, system. So your battery, it's a 12 volt battery. Your battery should be reading around 12.5, somewhere around that range, 12.5 um, and up um, to 12.8 normally. So that's what your battery should be reading. You know, mine right now is reading 11.69, 11.55. So this battery is no good. Um, so that's why we're gonna be replacing this. Now what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go and I'm gonna show you how the alternator is supposed to be functioning when it's functioning correctly. So we're gonna leave that there. I'm gonna start the car, if it starts. All right, so I went to start the car. The car did not start because the, the battery, obviously the battery is failing. And um, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you on the other vehicle, uh, on the Escalade, how exactly uh, you check the battery again. That's a good battery. And I'll be able to show you the alternator um, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you on the other vehicle. All right, well, here we are. Here we are on our, at my Escalade. And um, check the voltage on this now. Positives over here. And try to get this thing here for the negative. So I'm touching the two terminals. You see the voltage is showing up as a, as a 12.67. So in this case, the battery is good. Um, that's what the other one should read. You know, on the Porsche, it's reading, it was reading 11.55 or something like that. This one's reading 12.67. That's what it should be reading. And it's not, I mean, uh, the, the Porsche isn't. So that's why we're gonna end up uh, replacing them. So, so right now I'm gonna show you how to test the alternator. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna, right now we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna start the car and uh, let it run. And then what you do is you test it with the same um, voltmeter. You're gonna test to see the amperage, see, see how much uh, volts are coming out of the battery. So we're getting 14.76. Um, ideally, you want anywhere from 14.2 minimum to around 14.8. And that's telling you that the alternator is sending the signal out, or not signal, it's, it's sending a charge to the battery to recharge the battery. So that's how you can tell whether it's your battery that's bad or that it's your alternator. On the Porsche, I've already tested this and uh, it was giving me the correct uh, voltage when the car was running. And um, so I know it's the battery and it's not the alternator. This is one simple way. I mean, there's other things that could be going wrong, um, but 
to try to find the culprit of whether it's the battery or the alternator this is the quickest way to uh, do a quick to do a quick diagnostic well hello i am actually on my way back um i went and picked up a new battery uh, i went to pep boys they had an online because pep boys carries the the bosch batteries uh online they had a special it was I think the battery was 219 and they had a 20% off or something like that. Ended up getting it for um, $200, which includes a core charge, which is $15. So of that 200, I'll get 15 back once I return the old battery. And, you know, I ended up going with what they, with, with what they call a, an absorbed matte glass battery. Uh, these are the newer type of batteries. They're sealed. Um, they don't leak like some of the old conventional batteries. You don't have to refill them. Um, so the only drawback is that they are a little bit more expensive than the regular batteries. But this one actually comes with a four year warranty. Uh, so it's something that I think a lot of the other batteries, they either come with a two year or three year at max. So this one has a four year warranty. The other thing to look at is the, um, there's different ratings for the batteries. Uh, they, they usually go by CCA, which is cold uh, crank, uh, cr cold crank amps, uh, or cold cranking amps, and that pretty much just lets you know what the amperage is for when the car is, you know, well, cold weather, so at zero degrees uh, Fahrenheit, and that's very important, uh, especially if you are in uh, cold weather areas like I am. I'm in, I'm in Maryland, and it will get down to zero, you know, every once in a while. Um, but in the winter time, it's usually 20 degrees. So that makes a big difference, you know. I think if you're in, in, in Florida or in, in Texas and in much warmer climates, you may not need such a high CCA. Uh, but in this area, I definitely need that. So I ended up getting a, a Bosch uh, premium battery that has a 850 CCA uh, cold cranking amps. And I think the OEM battery has like 740, so it's definitely more than enough. And there's also different types of batteries for the for the uh, Porsche. When you get an OEM battery, um, it's either 70 amp hour or an 80 amp hour. And the battery that I got today, I think it's a 92 amp hour, so it'll fit the bill. Because the thing is, you, you have to realize these vehicles are, you know, very techno technologic technologically technologically advanced. Uh, so you have heated seats, you have um, some of them, you know, I have heated uh, steering wheel in mind, you have your GPS navigation, you know, your radio with an LCD screen, you have, you know, wiper fluid for like the headlights, um, you have power mirrors, power seats, uh, and you know, they're, they're in the convertible, I have a cabriolet, so it's got the convertible top. So there's just so many electronics in these vehicles that they really need these high powered batteries, you know, high capacity batteries. So I think it's something that you definitely have to splurge on uh, because everything in this car is electronic. Um, so like I said, you know, I was having all these little electrical grim gremlins and um, you know, so I got the battery now. Um, it's an AGM. I think the, the part number is like 49 dash 850B AGM, I'm pretty sure, um, but it's the Bosch, it's one of their top of the line uh, batteries, you know, it's, like I said, it, it normally retails for, I think, 219, uh, so there's definitely, definitely different options out there, uh, Interstate was another one that I researched that was pretty good, and I just couldn't find it anywhere in stock around here, uh, so I just went to pick up to, to, to the closest store that I could find. Um, so I'm gonna get home, and I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and do that install. Now I'm gonna get some help um, from somebody at home because I can't. I, I, if anybody has watched my videos in the past, I had back surgery. I have two ruptured discs in my back, and um, I'm not supposed to be lifting anything past like 30 to 40 pounds. You know, I have a two-year-old, and that's about it. That's about the heaviest thing that I lift. Um, and 50 pounds, especially when you have to bend over. Um, because of the position of where the battery is, is really harsh on the back. So uh, for anybody else that has to do this, um, I recommend having an extra set of hands uh, because it is 
it is a heavy, you know, it's a heavy, heavy item. 50 pounds is, is pretty heavy when you're leaning over. So I'm gonna get home and I'm gonna see who's home that could uh, help me swap that out and I'll get back to the video on that. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, the battery uh, selection, you know, the AGM, uh, I think is a superior battery and it's supposed to be something that's gonna last longer. You know, when you choose a battery also, the battery will have a made on date. So it'll tell you the month and the year that it was made on. And it's important not to get anything that's too old, you know. Um, this one I think was was made in April and we're probably around August. So that's kind of borderline of um, of where it needs to be, but that's the, uh, that's the freshest battery they had there. And the car's not running right now. Um, so I, I need a battery, you know, ASAP. So that's just, you know, my opinion. And, um, you know, obviously I'll do some updates later on down the road on, you know, how the battery has performed, if it's lasted, you know, the four years that it's supposed to. And um, we're gonna go ahead and I guess do the install video. All right, so here we have the new battery that I just picked up. And I'm trying to see, yeah, the part number is 49850BAGM. All right, so we are going to be removing that bolt there in order to get the uh, get that uh, that bracket out in order to be able to remove the battery. And the other thing we got to do is we have to take this out um, in order to that's like preventing. So we're going to take that out there and put it in the new battery. All right, so we are looking at a 13 millimeter uh, socket in order to get rid of that bolt down there. So we'll get started on that now. Honestly, I think I think I think it just swivels this way and then comes out. Back, I, I, yeah, and then up. There you go. I'm gonna set it there. Are you, oh, you put in the trunk if you want. All right, cool. All right, so we just ran into a little bit of an issue. This battery is a little longer than the uh, stock battery. Um, so what I am doing is this. I took this off just to try to see if I can get. I guess I better look at this. That sits down there. Now, these three holes have threads, you know, and the OEM battery sits right there. Now, this battery needs this much room. So the thing with that is um, there's no thread on the side. So I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna grab another bolt. Um, I'm gonna use the same, well, I'm gonna use the same bolt. I'm gonna grab another nut uh, to go underneath um so that uh you know it'll fit in there but the way this works is the battery you put it on towards this side the lip you know the battery goes underneath this lip here and then after that it goes down and then it slides that way so it goes underneath uh, that lip and that's how it's held into place so right now we're gonna go ahead and, and try that So the battery on my phone ended up dying, so I'm going to continue on uh, an iPad. And what I ended up doing was I ended up, uh, this battery is a little longer than the stock battery. Um, there are holes for the other bracket. There's another hole there, but there's no thread uh, in order for the, the nut to catch. I was able to get a 13 millimeter um, wrench underneath to hold the nut and I was able to tighten this down. So right now the nut that I used is the nut that was here. Um, there's another one underneath there. So I just took that one out. I'm gonna, you know, go to the hardware store, go to the auto parts store and grab one of those nuts um, um, eventually. Um, this is the vent hose. 
And that goes uh, right into here. So we'll just leave that there. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, hook these back up. And I'll end up starting the car. So that's what I ended up having to do. A little bit of a modification I wasn't expecting. Um, this does close. The, uh, the cover does fit on there. I've tried that. Um, battery's just a little bit longer. Um, it's a bigger battery. It's got more capacity. But like I said, with this cold weather, I think I'm going to need it. So that was, that's the modification I had to do. Um, you know, it's nothing crazy, but you will need another nut to hold that bolt on uh, from underneath. You know, for now, I just, like I said, I used that one. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish that up and uh, we'll see how that, uh, that goes. So we're going to use some of this gel on the terminal here. A little bit is all you need. So we'll connect the negative first. up and put this cover back on and we're going to start the car. Moment of truth. starts right up. Now, when it does start up, you're going to get a bunch of um, error messages. PDSM failure is one of the ones that you're going to get. Um, this has happened before, and it's just a matter of, um, you know, the computer, once you drive it around for a while, the computer will reset, and that should go away. Now, I disconnected the battery for when I was working on the vehicle, so that's something that's, uh, that's happened before. Now, I'm pretty sure I have gas in the tank, so I think from the malfunction from before, it's still having an issue with that with that reading, but I'm hoping that it'll go away as I drive the car also. And I'll, I'll do an update later, but, um, you know, car definitely cranks right up right away, which it wasn't, it wasn't before. I would crank a couple times. So... We're gonna take it for a drive and hopefully that'll clear those uh, those codes. All right, well, I'm doing a, just a follow-up. I ended up going to get another nut um, and um, some washers. So I'm gonna go ahead. This is where I had left. Uh, I used the nut that was here underneath this bolt in order to tighten this down. Now there's a little groove underneath, um, like a little divot so that you can actually put it in there and it'll sit in there. Um, so that it you know, makes it easier to put this on. So I am just, um, you know, I got a, according to this, it's an M8 uh, by M8125 hex nut. And, um, you know, I'm going to put a washer on there. And the hex nut, it's hard to see here, but. You know, it, it still stays on there. I mean, it's not going to fall off or anything without that. But um, I just thought, you know, I'd go ahead and I'd secure that. So I'm going to put that on. But other than that, you can see everything else here. Uh, the vent for it, everything else is in place. All right, so I've taken the car for a drive now. I, I drove about five miles. Um, the PSM failure light went out and the gas gauge, um, after I turned it off for a while and let it come back on, it uh, it reset itself on, on, on its own. So now it's showing a full tank of gas because I had put in a full tank before we started. So I just want to thank you. Please subscribe, like, and share. And thanks for taking a look at our videos. Hopefully it helped you out.